<laughs> right. <clears throat> Just to cover a few things. Um, by the way, the, the reason there hasn't been many videos lately, uh, you can still hear some of it in the throat. I've been kind of drifting in and out of concrud, if that makes any sense. I think the throat's starting to clear up now, though. So videos will be hopefully making a return next week. I do have quite a small stack of things behind me ready to review. So the reviews will be kicking off again next week. Now, <coughs> for the people who don't know what's happening, who are more than likely outside of the UK, uh, like for the folks over in the US and stuff like that, Rishi Sunak, the Prime Minister of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, decided unexpectedly to call for a general election yesterday. And... Uh, the general election will be running for six weeks and it will end on July the 4th, Independence Day for the US and July the 4th is when everyone in the UK will run out and vote in a new government, probably Labour, because I highly fucking doubt the Conservatives are going to win again, not after how much they've fucked up recently. So, this basically means that today and tomorrow are the wash-up sessions, because tomorrow evening, Parliament dissolves. In other words, it's done, it's over, it's now election, electioneering season. There will be no sitting government, right? So, <clears throat> tomorrow evening, Parliament dissolves, all business must be ended, finished, completed, and that's it. Rishi Sunak's smoke-free generation tobacco and vapes bill was not passed into law. Now, the way that the UK works, it's the way that a lot of other parliamentary system works. You get a white paper bill, the white paper bill is passed through Parliament, it's then passed through select committees for amendments and stuff, and then once the select committees have finished amending them, it's thrown to the House of Lords. The, the House of Lords either gives it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. If it's given a thumbs up, it means it gets thrown back to the select committee who basically crosses the T's and dots the I's. It's thrown back to the House of Commons and it's basically passed into law. If the House of Lords give it a thumbs down, they add their own notations to the bottom of the white paper bill. It gets thrown directly back to the House of Commons, then back to number 10 Downing Street, and the whole process starts all over again after the amendments have been done. Now, here's the thing. The tobacco and vapes bill and smoke-free generation didn't even make it to the House of Lords' final stage, which means Rishi Sunak's smoke-free generation... Um, legacy, as he wanted to call it, had to be on the wash-up table. So the wash-up sessions is today, and more importantly, tomorrow. This is when sitting members of Parliament on the last day of the sitting government's tenure sits at a table and across that table is members of the Labour Party and probably a smattering of members from the SNP and Liberal Democrats. And what happens is the Leader of the House or the Prime Minister himself will present bills that are still not passed into law on the table and everyone around that table gives it a thumbs up or a thumbs down if they want to pass it into law and throw it to the Lords or thumbs down, scrap it. Today, Penny Mordaunt, who is the leader of the House, basically one of Rishi Sunak's deputies, read out the bills that will be on the final day of business, the wash-up session. Tomorrow, Rishi Sunak's tobacco and vapes bill and smoke-free generation was not mentioned. Not one mention of it. So the idea is, every Thursday, I think this is roughly every Wednesday or every Thursday, the Leader of the House, in other words, one of the um, deputies, basically, of the Prime Minister, reads out statements of what the House of Lords is going to be talking about the following day, the end of the week, essentially. But this particular session is going to be the wash-up session. 
This is where Rishi Sunak and the current sitting Conservative Party will get a handful of bills forced into law, essentially, by consent of the Labour Party. So if the Labour Party nods and the Conservative Party nods, it gets forced into the Lords. In other words, the Lords chew on it while there's no sitting government. And nine times out of ten, when the next government takes its seat after the general election, nine times out of ten, because that law has been given the nod by the sitting party and the opposition party, who are now both in agreement that this law should come into effect, then the Lords basically signs it off and says, OK, the fact that the tobacco and vapes bill was not mentioned at all by name, by Penny Mordant, for the final day of business and the wash-up session means that by the looks of things, Sunak's ditched it. Just, oh, hot potato, drop. He's ditched it. Now, Penny Mordant did mention other business at the end of the wash-up session tomorrow. But for all intents and purposes, if a bill is not named as a headliner bill for the final session of Parliament, and it's thrown unnamed into other business, I don't think they're going to talk about it. I honestly do not think that the tobacco and vapes bill and Rishi Sunak's legacy of a smoke-free generation bill is going to be even mentioned at the wash-up session tomorrow. In other words, it's dead. Dead. Gone. Hmm. Now, this leads to several questions. The big one being the disposable ban. So... Sunak's disposable ban was a, was a separate legislative bill that was not part of the smoke-free generation bigger bill that's currently sitting on the wash-up table. Maybe. It might actually be chucked in the bin by this point in time. Nobody actually fucking knows. All we know is it wasn't mentioned, right? So... The disposable ban was passed through Parliament as a separate law and a separate bill, not part of the bigger smoke-free generation Rishi Sunak's grand legacy plan thing. The question is, did Rishi link the disposable ban bill to the much bigger smoke-free generation vape and fucking tobacco bill? Because if Rishi Sunak linked the disposable ban bill to the smoke-free generation bill, and the smoke-free generation bill does not make it past the end of the wash-up session tomorrow, then the disposable ban bill sinks with the smoke-free generation bill. If he did not pass the disposable ban bill as a linked bill to the smoke-free generation bill, then the smoke-free generation bill, which covers the whole flavour scare tactics, the taxation thing that they were going on about, that's all being scrapped by the looks of it. But the thing is, if the disposable ban bill was not linked to it, it means the disposable ban still goes ahead next year. The question is, did he link the bills? Because nobody actually knows. Nobody knows. Did he link the bills? Because if the bills were linked, then the disposable ban gets flushed down the toilet tomorrow evening. If he didn't link the bills, the disposable ban goes ahead next year. Yeah. Uh, if, and by the looks of it, it is not quite guaranteed, but by the looks of it, this smoke-free generation bill is not going to be mentioned in the wash-up session tomorrow, which means it dies on the table, essentially. What's going to happen is for the e-cig industry right now, if, and it's a very, 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 very slim possibility of the vape 
and Tobacco Bill being talked about in other business at the end of the wash-up session tomorrow. It's a very slim possibility of it happening. So for all intents and purposes, it looks as if they're not going to be talking about it, right? So after tomorrow, in other words, after this coming weekend, the UK e-cig industry is on a slight reprieve. We will not have a massive tax hike looming over us. We will not have the question of flavour bans looming over us. Instead, for the next six weeks during the election season, up until July the 4th, which is when we go out and vote, we can sit back and breathe. And then we come across the next problem, because it looks as if the Labour Party is going to win. Are Labour anti-vaping? They are not as anti-vaping as they used to be, but they still lean towards anti-vaping. On the upside, the Labour Party is still willing to talk with the likes of UK VIA, the NNA, and the IBVTA, because John Dunn said, so I've been talking to John Dunn all morning on WhatsApp, um, and he says the Labour Party still talk to us, the Conservatives simply don't. So the, cons the, the Labour Party is willing to talk. The worry that I now have is, will the Labour Party pick up Rishi Sunak's dead bill add more shit to it and then try and introduce it into Parliament after their first year. That's the worry that I've currently got. They are going to tax vaping. There's, there's no ifs or buts. They are going to tax vaping. So some form of taxation is going to take place on the vaping industry within the next two years. Within the next two years. It's going to happen. The question is, how bad is Labour going to do it? Is it going to be as bad as Rishi Sunak's plan? Is it going to be worse than Rishi Sunak's plan? Or, because they're willing to listen to the industry, will they do just a flat blanket, I don't know, 15 or 20% tax on the wholesale floor? Which is a lot better than the current tax plan that's, that was on the table uh, with Rishi Sunak's legacy smoke-free generation bill. The other question is also an interesting one. Normally when a bill is popped on the table for a wash-up session, it's because the Prime Minister knows that the opposition benches, in other words the Labour Party, who are still technically the opposition party until tomorrow night, it basically means that if that bill is slapped on the table for the wash-up session, then Rishi Sunak and all of his colleagues know that the opposition party are going to give that bill a nod. It's the only way that a bill would make the wash-up session. So the question is, by the looks of it, the Labour Party, for the most part, <coughs> disagreed with Rishi Sunak's smoke-free generation legacy. The question is this, why? The Labour Party, for the most part, leans towards anti-vaping. What part of Rishi Sunak's bill for the smoke-free generation tobacco and vapes clause, what part of that bill did the Labour Party not like, which made Rishi Sunak pull his legacy bill from the wash-up table? Because the Conservatives would have backed it. But the question of Labour not backing it meant that Rishi Sunak pulled it from the final session. What part of that bill did the Labour Party not like? That's the question that's now rolling around inside my head. Because for that bill not to make it on the table means that the Conservative Party thought that Labour would not agree to passing it through. Why? What part of that bill did they not like? And that's going to annoy me for the next two or three weeks, that question. Anyway, <clears throat> that basically covers it for now, folks. It's basically a quick update video. Um, in the short term,
And there's a big if with this. If the tobacco and vapes bill is not mentioned in other business for the House of Lords tomorrow, if it's not mentioned at all tomorrow, that's it. It's dead. It's gone. It dies with the Conservative government tomorrow evening. It's gone. We have got six weeks to sit back and breathe and wait for the Labour Party to take power. And then we find out, probably within the first year, what Labour's plans are going to be for the e-cigarette industry in the UK. But the fact the Conservatives thought that Labour would not pass that bill in the wash-up session leads me to believe that part of Rishi Sunak's plan, or even all of Rishi Sunak's plan, Labour didn't like it. Whether it was the flavour question, whether it was the overtaxation, or whether it was both at the same time, Labour didn't like it. Which kind of gives me hope, just a little bit, little bit, tiny bit of hope for a future Labour government in six weeks' time. Anyway, big thanks to John Dunn of UK VIA for letting me know about this bill probably not being on the wash-up final session before Parliament dissolves tomorrow. Rishi Sunak's legacy dies. Along with Rishi Sunak's political career and the political career of half of the Conservative Party. And that's a good thing, people. It really is. Anyway. That is it from me, as always, folks. Thanks for watching, and have a good one.